Hi, everybody. Can you all hear me? All right, all right, all right, all right. So uh, thanks for being here. My name is Hua Wen, and I'm uh, joined here by my fellow data engineer, Dan Smug. I think I got that name right, right? Smug? No? Smil, sorry. Dan Smil. Sorry, my Polish is uh, not great. Smil. Um, and, uh, you know, we are both data engineers for the New York Vets in New York City. And uh, our talk is on how we use Airflow and uh, other services to work more collaboratively with uh, the analytics and data science people um, in the organization. All right. Data engineering at the New York Mets, great. So first, let me tell you a little bit about data engineering at the New York Mets. Um, I've been with the Mets a little over a year. Stan has been with the Mets for about two years now. Um, and we've had like a lot of, so we're relatively new as a team. Uh, the data engineering team as a separate entity has only really uh, existed in the last few years. And we've increased from like none as a separate team to like four currently. Uh, the goal of our team is to build a data infrastructure that's robust, but also useful to all parts of the organization, uh, from our systems team to our analytics team. So to do this, we primarily depend on our Google Cloud Platform, and we run Airflow using Cloud Composer. Um, all right. As you might know, sports data, specifically baseball, is big, right? So we're talking like terabytes of data, and it comprises a lot of diverse data sets. You've got uh, biomechanical data where they uh, have joints and uh, points at every time, position of every single player, uh, umpire, coach on the team, uh, where they move at uh, every point in time. Um, and then, you know, we there's a picture here of one of our pitchers, Jose Quintana, and that's like uh, an example of some of the me uh, biomechanical joint data that um, is being measured uh, during every single pitch. Um, and, you know, it, in a major league uh, game, in a single major league game, it's going to be like 300 pitches, right? They're about a little bit less or whatnot. So that's a lot of data, I guess, is what we're trying to tell you. Um, and then as far as volume, it's also a lot. Um, yeah, we're ingesting games from major minor league affiliates, college, and amateur level. Um, so that's about 45,000 games a year. And, you know, translating that, that's like 7 mil million pitches a year. We've got players, uh, 45,000 players from across all of the different leagues that um, that we measure. Um, it, all right. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Airflow is at the heart of our platform. Um, and we manage about 150 DAGs by Cloud Composer. We've got a lot of integrations, whether it's like third-party APIs or MLB sources. And I want to take a moment to recognize this graphic that my friend Stan really likes. So appreciate that for a minute or two, because he we had an argument about it and got to one. <laughs> All right. Now that I've uh, outlined a little bit on the data engineering team on the Mets, let's uh, move on to some of what we saw when we worked with other teams, right? And that's, that's partly of what this talk is about. When we were working with other teams, we noticed there were processes that were being done across the organization, um, and it like differed wildly. There were some processes that were being run locally on somebody's laptop, or maybe like on a single virtual uh, instance, and it was being run in isolation, right? And, and in some cases, uh, it really could have been improved with peer reviews and you know more best practices uh, that could be used in this. And so as a result, there were, yeah, and I'm sure this happens in a lot of organizations, silos of data and expertise um, all over the place. And it was kind of hard to work together so that like the best of each uh, each team skill set was being brought together. And so that that's kind of like where we noticed this and we decided, you know, how do we kind of solve for this, especially uh, among our data science and analytics team? At this point, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Stan. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Hawa. Uh, okay, so Hawa told you a little bit about challenges that we, that we faced. So now we came up with uh, the solution 
uh, that we call the data workflows. And we wanted to give you some hints about what we did and how it w worked out for us. So the main idea was to have a simple way of running any workflows on schedule uh, with, you know, with a little maintenance uh, from data scientists or data analysts uh, that data engineering team would take the hard part or, or as some, some of you might think fun part, which is managing the airflow DAX and, uh, you know, allow of, of all of the parties to collabor collaborate and show off the best part. So first of all, of course, there is code collaboration. So we put, uh, we put a big stress on, on the collaboration here, uh, because we know that this is the perfect way to learn from each others. And across different teams, you know, we, we have different backgrounds. We do different things. So we focus on different points of code during the review. So uh, we, we thought that uh, every PR, uh, that is being uh, pushed uh, as part of this workflows should be reviewed by both data engineer and data scientist or data analyst because we just focus on different parts of the of the uh, solution so this will bring some synergy together and then uh, of course we we focused on building the re reusable components and stressed out the uh, stressed out the importance of uh, dry rules don't repeat yourself so you know every every part of the code that you write uh, if it's general enough, it should be shared uh, universally with others and be reused. So you should focus on writing the code that can be used by others without any problem. And uh, in our organization, the most people uh, would use Python or R uh, for data workflows. So these two languages are what we focus the most. But of course, there 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 may be others, and. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's go to another slide. So of course this is Airflow Summit. So we wanted to stress out the import importance of the Airflow uh, in our solution, and you know there are some uh, some multiple reasons why we chose an Airflow. First of all, we already use it for many uh, ELT processes across uh, our team, and uh, we have established monitoring practices that really. Uh, works good for us and all the issues or the problems are handled handled really promptly and uh, other than that we have a lot of DAGs that can be loosely coupled together that are interdependent and we have some mechanism to trigger or uh, to sense uh, the uh, like when one DAG finishes then we trigger another one and we have like big uh, interdependencies so it was uh, just uh, it makes sense to go with the same solution as we as we used to, and then of course Kubernetes uh, at as the at the core of the Airflow where we we have our uh, cloud we have our um, cluster and uh, it provides easy and uh, flexible scaling and we can use Kubernetes pod operator that are. Uh, that are separate that the pods and the workflows are separated from each other's, and uh, also we have uh, implemented the uh, DAGs that are triggered dynamically based on the uh, YAML configs, and they really nicely fits all our needs and all our or all our workflows, and they are really flexible to to use. And uh, let's dive a little bit into the technical side of the solution. Uh, so we have uh, uh, people submitting the scripts in you know any language, but but mostly this is Python or R uh, with uh, templated documentation. And we re we really focus and uh, we really uh, discussed how we should uh, create a documentation. So every workflow could be uh, described very um, ri richly, and uh, we we can create some kind of repository with uh, all the use cases uh, for every workflow, uh, with all the potential uh, problems or potential um, or, or potential improvements in the future that can be applied when we have some more time and uh, 
smaller backlog. Uh, so we require the documentation to be part of every, every workflow, every PR. And then we have common shared libraries that we discussed uh, previously that, you know, is growing and is proving uh, really, really well. Uh, then uh, we have some tests to be run, pre-deployment, and uh, after uh, the process finishes. So uh, as data engineering team, we focus on uh, testing the quality of technical solution of, of the code. But then we also have, uh, in partnership with other departments, we make sure that the, the data that is produced uh, by the data workflows is also, you know, uh, it's also good quality. It makes sense. Uh, uh, we are running a lot of stress set tests just to make sure that uh, we don't produce and uh, don't make decision based on something that is wrong. Yeah, sorry. So uh, here we have the, you know, what I've described, but as a graph. Um, so uh, we, we use Google Cloud um, project, uh, Google Cloud um, platform as a core. So as you can see, uh, we use Cloud Build, uh, which is uh, used for CECD deployments. And then we uh, deploy the Docker images to artifact repository which is you know just a, a repository for storing the docker images and then uh, we have the configuration in written in the yaml which which we obviously love and uh, there are then dynamic DAGs that are created based on the on the yaml documentation and these DAGs uh, are using the version uh, docker images so if we want to deploy the new version, we uh, we of course like we need to change the version of the of the image after it's after it's being tested, and uh, then we have a staging location on Google or or on uh, cloud storage, and then we uh, load the data into Data Mart, uh, which in our case is a BigQuery, and we have a continuous monitoring of of our data marts that is sending us the um, messages to to slack and all of all every step of the process is monitored so we can easily uh, go back and discuss if something goes wrong or if we have any problems with our pipelines okay uh, so here we just we we love yam so we wanted to add the yam on the slide so you know just a very quick slide how we can just write the config. Then we love Pydantic as well. So every model, every YAML should be parsed and validated with Pydantic. And uh, we maintain documentation. And then we just publish it as, as, a, as a new dynamic DAG. And yeah, that's it. Great. That, thank you.